Good morning. It is a, a rather cool, rainy, dreary morning here in Louisville, but it is still a good morning because we get to worship, and uh, we get to worship together with, with those here in the room. I, I do want to say welcome, and for the benefit of those who are worshiping with us online, just mention that uh, we are coming worshiping from the in the St. John United Church of Christ in Louisville, Kentucky, and we are glad that you are worshiping with us. Now, again, acknowledging that those worshiping with us online may not be worshiping with us on, on Sunday morning, but at another time, but whenever you are worshiping with us, we're glad that you have made that choice and, uh, and are setting aside some time to, with us, kind of recenter ourselves and reground ourselves in our faith and reminding ourselves of Christ's presence in our lives and of the amazing, expansive, and inclusive love of God that, that enfolds us all. This is the, the Sunday before Thanksgiving, and so we th are thinking about being thankful but this is also the last Sunday of the liturgical year, the last Sunday of the church year. We begin a new year next Sunday with the first Sunday of Advent, but today is the last Sunday of the year, and it is what has come to be known as the Reign of Christ Sunday. Our scripture passage in a few minutes that you will hear uh, involves Jesus before Pilate, the Roman governor. And Pilate asks him if he is a king, if he is the king of the Jews. And we'll talk about that some. But we're going to talk about what the reign of Christ means, what it means for us. And so as we begin our time of worship, I invite you, as Karen plays our prelude here in just a moment, to breathe deeply. Don't hold your breath. Let it out. And let whatever is weighing upon you, and I know in these days that can be hard, but try to let whatever is weighing upon you go for these moments and open yourself to the presence of God in this place or wherever you may be. Let's worship together.
please join me in the responsive call to worship? With grateful hearts, we gather to worship. We give God thanks and praise. With open minds, we listen to the needs of others. We give God thanks and praise. With outstretched hands, we serve one another. We give God thanks and praise. And with all our being, we follow Jesus Christ. We give God thanks and praise. Let's pray together. Holy One, the source, story, and spirit of love, we praise you for the signs of your reign among us, for hope that overcomes despair, for trust that rises above hurt, for love that prevails over hatred, and peace that restores harmony after discord. In our worship today, may we find in your spirit comfort in these troubled times, but also strength for the road ahead. May we be renewed in our commitment to live into the reign of Christ and to do that work of love to which we are called. Move among us and within us, for we are your people, your church. Through Christ, the head of the church, we pray. Amen. As we think about the name of Christ, we think about the wonder of God, it is hard not to realize our own shortcomings, our own failings. And so we come to time for confession, recognizing that we fail individually, but we also fail as a community, as a society, as a church. And so let us come together to God with our confessions and we'll follow that with a time for silent prayer or just simply the keeping of silence. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus Christ, we pray for the coming of your kingdom week by week. But we confess we are not exactly clear on what that means. Will you come to set things straight in the world? Will you come to judge us and show us where we've all gone wrong? Will you bring all things to an end? Or will you offer us a new beginning? Jesus, forgive us when we mix up our own desires with your purposes for your people. Teach us how to live out your truth.
We offer all these prayers in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Friends, know that we serve a God of love, of grace, of compassion, of mercy. As we have offered our confession in faith, know that you are, that we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Please stand in body or spirit for the reading of the gospel. Today's scripture lesson is from the Gospel of John, chapter 18, verses 33 to 37. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you do this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priest have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. This is the gospel of Christ. Thanks be to God. of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing to you for you are our rock and our redeemer amen if you're a parent you've seen the look even if you are not a parent there's a good chance that you've seen it And most of us, when we were kids, probably at some time or another, had that look. I'm talking about the look on a kid's face when they have done something that they knew they were not supposed to do. They may be feeling guilty. They may be hoping against hope to get away with whatever it was. But regardless, when mom or dad come into the room, the child's face gives them away. The parent knows that something is up. So the question comes, what did you do? The question comes with an assumption. The the questioner assumes, given what they observe, that the questionee has done something outside the bounds of what is considered acceptable, something for which consequences of a negative nature would be expected. The assumption is not always correct, but it quite often is. Well, Pilate, the, the Roman governor of Judea, found himself making that assumption about Jesus. Now, not because Jesus had a a look on his face that he looked like he was hiding something or was guilty of something, but because of the circumstances in which they met. The priests and other leaders of the people had gotten Jesus arrested. Not because he'd really done anything outside the law, but really because they saw him as a threat to their position and privilege within the system and and under Rome. 
He had challenged their thinking too many times. He'd made them look bad in front of the people. And so now he's been brought before Pilate, who they want to give the order to have him executed. But before he'll do anything like that, Pilate wants to satisfy his own curiosity here. He has some questions. Are you the king of the Jews? That was one of the things that that Jesus had been accused of saying, of claiming to be king, which under Roman law was treason. It was pitting himself against Caesar. But Jesus responds with a question of his own about where Pilate heard this. And Pilate then looks at Jesus and asks, what have you done? The implication is he must have done something wrong, something heinous, something terrible to have ended up in this position facing crucifixion. What have you done? So what did he do? On this day that we call the reign of Christ Sunday, we ought to think about what Jesus did, how he lived his life, what he prioritized, what he treated as important, what values he demonstrated in his life. Putting all of that together will give us a picture of what the reign of Christ should look like. Help us to understand how we ought to live if we want to live into that reign. If we want to be part of bringing it on earth as it is in heaven. So what did he do? Well, first and foremost, Jesus loved. He loved those who followed him, sharing his life with them, being patient with them, pouring himself into them. He loved those who followed him, but he also loved those who chose not to follow him. I'm reminded of a story from the gospels that that we talked about in recent weeks about a rich, depending on which gospel you're reading, a a rich young ruler, a rich young man, or just a a young man who came to Jesus asking what he must do to inherit eternal life. And, And Jesus talked with him, told him what he would need to do, and the young man chose to walk away. And yet scripture says Jesus looked at him and loved him. Along with loving, Jesus cared about the real needs of people, the real things, tangible, physical things that people were experiencing about their suffering. So much of what is written of Jesus' life are stories of him feeding the hungry, healing the sick. There were no conditions that people had to meet, no co-pays, no prerequisites. He just helped them. And Jesus consistently identified with people who were seen, who were viewed, who were categorized as other and went against societal conventions if those conventions involved prejudice or sexism, eating with tax collectors, talking with women in public, advocating for prostitutes and others who were seen as sinners, affirming the faith of a foreigner over that of his own people, and making a despised Samaritan the hero of one of his 
stories, one of his parables. He consistently identified with those at the bottom of the societal ladder. And Jesus actively opposed injustice. This is one we really need to hear in these days. Living in a society with a justice system that is in so many ways broken. Having so much systemic injustice, be it racial or, or otherwise, that is baked into the system. There have been several versions of a, of a meme going around on social media lately, but in some form it says, stop trying to sit at the tables Jesus would have flipped. Well, friends, Jesus flipped those tables because poor people were being taken advantage of, extorted, basically, under the guise of religion. And at the beginning of his ministry, Jesus talked of freeing the captive and the oppressed as being part of his mission, part of what he came to do. He actively opposed injustice in any form in which he encountered it. Jesus told Pilate, my kingdom is not of this world. Now, he wasn't saying, he, he wasn't indicating that his kingdom was off somewhere in heaven in the sweet by and by, and that it just had nothing to do with this world, with, with the here and now. That's not what he meant. He was saying that the kingdom he came to announce, the kingdom that he came to bring, was of different values, different substance compared to the systems in place then or now for that matter it was not about wealth or power it was about equity and justice and love i think a time when this difference in his kingdom was illustrated was in his so-called triumphal entry into Jerusalem. You remember that when he entered the city less than a week before he was crucified. You remember the movie, The Santa Claus, Tim Allen? He played a, a man named Scott Calvin who worked for a toy company, was a divorced dad, and eventually he became Santa Claus. But before he became Santa Claus, when he was still working for that toy company, he was in a meeting where a colleague was pitching an idea for a new toy. And the new toy that he wanted them to make and to sell was a, a Santa Claus who rode in a tank. Well, Tim Allen's character was just exasperated by the idea. And he responds to the pitch by saying, well, isn't that a pretty picture? Santa rolling down the block in a panzer. Friends, Jesus didn't make his triumphal entry in a panzer or even a chariot. He rode a donkey. Now, as the owner of a few miniature donkeys, donkeys are great, but they're not exactly a symbol of power and military might. They, weren't, they aren't now and they weren't then. It was a different kind of kingdom that Jesus was talking about. So what is the message for us on this Reign of Christ Sunday? We need to remember those things, what Jesus did. 
so that we can understand what the reign of Christ should be about. There are far too many who seem to think that the reign of Christ has to do with political power. At a rally in San Antonio last weekend, former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn got up in front of the crowd and said, if we are going to have one nation under God, which we must, we have to have one religion one nation under God and one religion under God. Nothing Jesus ever said or did would lead to this kind of thinking. It's Christian nationalism, plain and simple, not Christianity. And it has nothing to do with the reign of Christ. It's about political power to maintain power for a certain group of people. In contrast, what Jesus did reveals the values and the priorities of the reign of Christ. Compassion, empathy, equity, justice, and love. The things Jesus did. Give us a picture of what we must be doing if we are to be about the work of the reign of Christ. It's about far more than what we do for an hour within this space on Sunday mornings. As people of that reign, we must demonstrate, not just as individuals, but as a church, Compassion for people in need. Empathy for the struggling. A commitment to work for equity for all people. And a commitment to speak and act for justice, for the oppressed, for the marginalized. And in all we do, Demonstrate a love, a love that just permeates our lives. They'll know you are my disciples. They'll know you are people of this kingdom by your love. Now, admittedly, that's a lot. But as we move into that way of living, then we fulfill our calling, we live into that reign, we participate in helping God's will to be done for God's kingdom, the reign of Christ to come on earth as it is in heaven. May it be so. Amen. Please stand in body or spirit and join in the affirmation of faith. We believe in God, our maker and creator of the universe. God created the earth and all that is in it and saw that it was very good. We believe that God has called us to protect and care for the earth in landscapes, waterways, oceans and skies its flora and fauna, and its human inhabitants. We believe God calls us to consume only what we need and not unthinkingly grab what we want out of selfishness and greed. We believe in Jesus, the Anointed One, preacher, teacher, and healer, sent by God to show us the way to live and to love. Jesus teaches us still his message of God's reign, a reign of peace, justice, and love, a reign which favors the poor and the pariahs is our eternal goal. We believe we are called to work with God to make this reign a reality for all people. 
We believe in God's Spirit, a powerful moving motivator available to us at all times to be used by us to show God's great love to those in need. We believe in God's community of saints, past, present, and future, this great gathering of people working for the greater good. We are grateful for God's saints down the ages, Christian thinkers, Christian pioneers, renewers of society, reformers of the church, martyrs, apostles, faithful servants, people of prayers and witnesses to Jesus. May we be numbered among them. Blessed be God forever. Amen. I invite you to join me in a time of prayer. I'll lead us in prayer, but invite you to offer up the prayers of your heart, the concerns that weigh upon you this morning. And then I invite you to join me as together we offer up the prayer of our Savior, the Lord's Prayer. Let's pray. God of abundant love and grace, in this season of giving thanks, we praise you for the fruits of the earth, for springtime and harvest. As the seasons turn, we know that you are with us through all of life's challenges and changes. In times of scarcity, may we find a double portion of your grace made known to us. In times of hardship, May we find a double portion of forgiveness and love. And in times of struggle, may we find a double portion of hope and of justice. Abundant God, shower us with your grace, peace, and joy. We've been reminded, O oh God, that we live in a world that is broken and in need of you. We have seen the brokenness of our justice system when lives are taken with no accountability. And in that, we cannot help but see once again the privilege that is present in whiteness when so many black and brown bodies have been the recipients of swift judgment on the streets without ever making it to a courtroom. Show us, God, how we can bring change, how we can bring healing, how we can do our part in making ours a society where all lives truly are valued, even the black ones that never have yet been. God, we hunger. We hunger for food. We hunger for relationship. We hunger for meaning in life. We hunger to make a difference. We hunger to be loved and to love. Thank you for Christ, who brings these things to us when we abide in you. Help us to be open to the ways that the bread and the cup feed us. Draw us close to yourself and to one another. Bring love alive in us and empower us to bear the fruit of love for the world. Help us to be your people, your church, making real the reign of Christ in our lives and in the world. Hear us now. As together we pray as you have taught us, O God, our Mother, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And in gratitude, we come to the table, not because we are worthy. There's been a lot in the news about denying communion to people based on this or that. Friends, none of us are worthy. Communion is a gift, and Christ is the one who invites us. Not me, not the church, not some hierarchy of the church, but Christ. 
And so hear this. Come, you weary and restless, all who hunger and thirst. Jesus calls us to dine as friends. Come, for God's feast awaits you. God be with you. As we receive this bread and this fruit of the vine, we honor both creator and creation. As we bless and share these gifts, we celebrate the table fellowship of Jesus. All are worthy, all are welcome. As we receive the fruits of the Spirit, we celebrate the communion of all things. Creator, Christ, and Spirit dance as one. So may it always be. Let us pray. Come, Holy One, come. Bless this meal. Bless this fellowship. Bless our lives, that justice and love may be the measure of our common witness. Amen. Through the broken bread, we participate in the body of Christ. Friends, it is the bread of heaven. Take and eat. Through the cup of blessing, we participate in the new life Christ gives. It is the cup of blessing. Take and drink. I invite you to stand in body or in spirit and join us in our prayer of thanksgiving. Thank you, merciful God, for gladness in this bread and cup, for love that cannot die, for peace the world cannot give, for joy in the company of friends, for the splendors of creation, and for the mission of justice you have made our own. Give us the gifts of this holy communion, oneness of heart, love for neighbors, forgiveness of enemies, the will to serve you every day, and life that never ends. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. Let me take just a a moment before we continue in our worship to call your attention to some things in the news and notes section of your bulletin, some announcements, if you will. For one, Central Louisville Community Ministries, uh, a community ministry agency here in this part of, of the city of Louisville, is taking donations of food items to be used in Thanksgiving uh, boxes, baskets for those in need during this season. So. If you are able to drop something off there this week before Thanksgiving, I know that that would be very much appreciated. Please note also that this week, this Thursday may be Thanksgiving, but next week we begin Advent, and that means it's it's time for a couple of things. For one, it's time to get poinsettias ordered. We won't have those in the sanctuary at the very beginning of Advent, but a, a couple of weeks in. But to have them arrive in time, we've got to get them ordered. So if you would like to order one or more poinsettias in honor or in memory of someone, uh, there are um, order forms in your bulletin, I believe. If you are watching online and would like to do that, uh, I encourage you to call our church office first thing in the morning uh, or sometime tomorrow morning to place that order. And Kathy can, can take your information and you can work out how you will uh, make that the payment for those. Uh, the second thing that uh, the beginning of Advent means is that it's time uh, after we have closed worship today to, to prepare the sanctuary for the upcoming season of Advent and for Christmas. And so if you are able, if you're here this morning and you're able to stick around for a while and help us out with that, uh, we've gotten 
most everything brought down and ready uh, so we don't have to, shouldn't have to carry anything hopefully down from, from storage, but it's all here ready to go. And uh, we appreciate anyone who can, can stay to help with that. It's, it's a job that needs to be done, but it's also a joy to share. And so I, I hope that several of you will be able to do that. I would call your attention also, we did include an announcement in the bulletin this morning just about the COVID-19 guidelines that we are following. Um, you know, we are continuing in with in-person worship, uh, but we recognize not everyone's comfortable with that, and that's okay. You can still worship with us online, and you will continue to be able to do so. But we do want to just give a few reminders. First of all, if you are sick, Please stay home and take advantage of, of that online opportunity to worship. Um, you know, we don't want to, to be sharing any, any viruses of any kind. And so uh, we encourage you to, to worship with us online if you're not feeling well. Uh, and that's okay. If you do come in, uh, we are continuing to, to uh, follow some protocols of social distancing. We ask that you sit in the pews uh, designated by the candlesticks on the ends of the pews. Uh, and we do also ask, uh, or I, I will say that we state a requirement, a continuing requirement that, that you wear masks for the entirety of the service, aside from when you're taking the elements of communion, of course. Uh, but we want, to, we want to protect each other, especially those who may be most, most vulnerable among us, and uh, it simply is a way for us to live out the love that, that Christ has shown us and called us to, to show one another. So, so just keep those in mind. As we continue forward, we will uh, be observing those things and uh, doing so in a spirit of love. Are there other announcements that need to be made that I have overlooked this morning? I'll take the silence as a no. Uh, I guess I, I got them all covered today. Well, again, it has been good to, to worship together this day. We're going to continue now in worship. I invite you to stand for the singing of our closing hymn. Friends, go now in the peace of Christ and give shape to the reign of Christ in the world in which we live. Go.
and be the church. In the name of God, creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Amen.